Hello, my name is Anna Davis Agostini. This is Ross Hubmucker, and we are the historical horticulturist here at Washington Crossing Historic Park. And today we'd like to demonstrate for you how to make a poultice, specifically how they would have made a poultice in the colonial era. So I would have been using plants for medicine. So I'm going to have my injured soldier here today, and he's coming to me with a bayonet wound <laughs> on his forearm, uh, which is gonna be a huge wound along with um, a fractured bone, okay? So we're gonna address that with herbs. So in order to make a poultice, I'm going to add chamomile flowers. All right, this is going to be for soothing the injury. Then I'm going to add calendula flowers as well. So modern science today has shown that calendula flowers are actually highly antibacterial. So they really make a perfect uh, plant to go into my poultice to prevent an infection. Um, as the gangrene was very real possibility without penicillin or antibiotics, I wanna make sure that my soldier is fit and no bacterial infection. So I'm also gonna add a little bit of comfrey. Herbalists at the time said that this was known to knit the bone together. So I'm adding the comfrey root in order to be able to heal the wound of the bone. I'm also gonna add a little bit of yarrow. So these are fresh from our garden today. So yarrow is a favored battlefield plant, favored by Achilles, in fact. And this is known for its uh, wound healing abilities, and it's also a styptic, which means it can stop the flow of blood. It's another reason I'm going to add another favorite plant, St. John's wort, because that will have a similar effect. It's a vulnerary, so it helps the wound to heal, and it also will stem some of the bleeding. So. Now I have my herbs all presented. I'm gonna wrap this up much like a little pouch. And then I'm gonna take some boiling hot water, and for my purposes, we'll pretend that this is boiling hot water, and I'll pour it over and extract out of this plant, poultice, all the chemical constituents I'm looking for. And these are gonna make a nice little tea, and the poultice is gonna soak in that, so the entire bandage will have medicinal properties. So, when I apply this to his wound, I'll wrap it over the injury. And then to keep it in place, I'm going to tie it off. If he's fortunate, and I'm a good nurse of sorts, I will address this wound again, clean it, put on a new bandage, start over. That's if I'm not too busy. So, my soldier's wound is addressed but I imagine that he's still in quite a lot of pain. <laughs> and so in order to address the pain, I'm gonna make a very simple tea. I'm gonna use the bark of the white willow tree here in this little strainer I have here. And perhaps I'll even add a little bit of lavender. So white willow bark has a very powerful constituent called salaic acid. And this is what modern aspirin is based on. So it's gonna help with the pain. The lavender hopefully will help him relax and go to sleep, because as we know, sleep is the best for me. So once I've made my little tea infusion and let it steep and cool, I don't wanna burn my soldier as well. He would drink this concoction, and when he was finished, maybe I'll add a little bit of a poppy syrup, and that will help him rest and sleep as well. Oh, so. <laughs> Thank you for uh, attending our quick presentation on how to make a poultice in colonial times. Hopefully you'll tune into the next episode. Thank you.